Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Today we look at Tales of Zestaria The X, Episode 1. Now, you guys might be confused. You're like, wait a second, you reviewed Episode 1. I actually, as of now, fixed um, the last episode title and put it as Episode 0 because we were actually then told that, hey, it's Episode 0. It's actually considered the prequel. And I figured that was like a prequel episode from just kind of the how it was gauged according to like the actual game. So I figured that was a prequel at the time, but I wasn't sure if they were actually going to keep it like that. So I figured that that would be Episode 1. That's actually Episode 0. Technically, this is Episode 1. So don't be f confused and be like, well, what's happening? I also, I do apologize. This is out so late. You know, I know a lot of you probably won't even view it because it's so late. But um, this is the only time I could get it up. Unfortunately, today I had a lot of stuff to do today. You're easier on the podcast. I had to go have dinner my family and stuff like that so i've been busy kind of all day today anyway so let's talk about what actually happened in this episode nonetheless so we have alicia kind of reeling from what happened in the actual prequel episode where she had to see everyone essentially that she was close to or at least she knew die and we're going to learn that that alicia as smart as she is and as great and a valiant knight as she is does have a lot of issues per se with certain things about herself and I'm not going to spoil that and go into too much detail with it but that's something from the games that I know they're going to already put in there because I could see uh, hints in here and there things that does happen that are very mimicky to the actual games. Now scrolling ahead of here she actually finds an entrance to a cave and when she's actually in that cave she's actually assaulted by these weird like scarab looking bug type things luckily there's actually a spirit nearby that's trying to help her keep her safe by showing her various you know like showing her that she could you know they could block the energy around her and she he also shows her a way out of the room but she cannot see the spirit because lo and behold that's also another thing from tales that you might not understand but humans it's not really a spoiler but i'll tell you guys any girls so you so you understand a little better most humans cannot see spirits in the show, in the kind of story lore of tales of Zestaria. So any of the spirits or the seraphim, which will be introduced to one of them later on, they can't see that with their own two eyes. So even though he's trying to like give her attention and trying to show her like he's there, she can't see it. Anyways, skipping ahead though, she's able to get out and safely. And then we're introduced to our really main character, Sore, who actually is going to be the central character of this whole series you know alicia will have a predominant role but unless they do something very different from the games which is very possible alicia will not have the same shining time that saray has and i'm not going to say that it already looks like they're making big differences by having her included more but if they don't do it the same exact way that's going to be a big difference and so don't worry but this is going to be essentially your main character your main focal point of the show him and his partner mickey leo who is actually a seraphim and what's funny is that, again, can't see Seraphim unless you are actually able to via certain things like you're, you're special and you have certain abilities to see them. Most people cannot. Now, these two, though, are big fans of discovering different ruins and they actually are talking about how they're trying to find this nice ruin that apparently has history evidence of the shepherd. And lo and behold, they actually do find what looks like the pathway to it, but they are stopped by their grandfather, who tells them, no, don't go that way, I forbid it. That area is off, off limits for a reason, I've, I've sealed that area before. So they are left in the house trying to go, well, why is it that, you know, we're not allowed to go see it? You know, we, they want to figure out, they want to see, they want to see what's there themselves. So of course, like any other teenager would do, they decide, hey, you know what, screw what Gramps said, we're going to go see it. Now, in the ruin... There's a lot of various things that happen. We see that Alicia is r running around in the one part of the ruin, trying to survive its kind of pitfall things and all that. She's doing a very bad job of surviving a lot of stuff there. But we also see that Saray finds one of the key items that he's going to need along his adventure, which is actually the Glove of the Shepherd. Which, also not going to go into too much spoiler territory with it, but that item's very important. You'll find out in a little while why it's so important. But essentially, what the biggest thing you'll take away from this is the actual meeting of Saray... Mikhail and Alicia. So having both of them, or having all three of them, excuse me, on screen at the same time, this is the major beginning point of the story for Tales of Zestaria. Even the game, this was kind of like the big change of events that happens, where you really get into the story, you get into the character. So I'm looking forward to episode two, technically. I think it's going to be awesome because of the sheer fact that we'll finally have some big events happen. You're going to see what events will happen eventually. But anyways, guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this review. I know it seems like there's not really much to talk about, but a lot of this episode was built on just showing their kind of, I guess essentially 
separate adventures, if that makes sense. Because you have Alicia wandering around the ruins, trying to survive the ruins. You have Sora and Mikleo being introduced. Not a lot of stuff to really actually see visually, you know. I mean, again, one of the best things about Tales of Hysteria the X is probably the visuals. I mean, Ufotable really knocked it out of the park with the visuals. They did a really great job. I love it. And, you know, that's one of the best things about this right now. I think the pacing for the show is a little bit off-key. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying it's a little bit off. And I hope that kind of alleviates itself a little bit more so episode two. I hope they start going back on the right track. You know, a little bit more interesting things here and there. It's, I mean, right now as it is, it was not bad. It just could have been a lot stronger. Anyways, guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this review. As always, hit that like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. You know whole nine. I will talk to you all later. Have a great night. Bye-bye.